um yeah once again glad to see you all and uh welcome on today's uh questions and answers session that's like i think that's the third time we host q a so that's basically the best time for you to ask what bothers you the most and i will show you some tips and tricks at your request if that's possible on today's webcast uh, i actually have a list of some uh, questions from you that we got before this host uh sorry before this event um so i'm gonna go use this list and i'm also gonna look at the uh chat to see what are the new questions you guys have and yeah let's see how it goes so first of all congratulations with bitcoin's all-time high it's like 66k right now or something let's check real quick oh actually it's 63 so a short sell off but that's that's okay still yeah all-time high 66 oh actually almost 67 which is great which is very great so despite all of this turbulence that has migrated from from china with its uh crackdown on on crypto and all of these mining operations migration from china the network now is more decentralized than ever before and you see how the price reacted despite all of this turbulence that happened in in china recently uh, we now have ETF, uh, futures ETF approval, which is not as good as if we would have uh, spot ETF approval, but still ETF futures is a good thing. Uh, it provides more exposure to um, US citizens, so that means more inflow into the uh, crypto space, more interest, more demand, which is very good in general for the price growth. Um, but yeah, that's not the topic of today's webcast. Today we're gonna go through some of the uh, interesting questions you guys shared with us. And the one that I see now was uh, what's the minimum deposit that you need in order to uh, launch the automated bot? So here's the thing with the minimum balance you need to have to launch the bot it all depends on the uh, crypto exchange and by the way my internet connection is lagging for some reason that's let's check yeah should be fine now so yeah it, it the answer is it all depends on the cryptocurrency exchange of your choice so for example in my case I have some coins on Binance, on Huobi, and OKEx. And as I told you on previous webcasts, uh, in most cases, you will get better um, config. How do you say? You will you will get better requirements. I mean, um, the, the the threshold for you to enter the market on Huobi and OKEx is lower than on Binance because for example on Binance the minimum trade size is around $10 okay so that means that in order to buy uh, let's say Shiba Inu coin you need to spend at least $10 to buy it because they won't let you buy uh, Shiba coin worth uh, only $3 of your investment okay which is not the case for Huobi and OKEx they have lower uh, entry barrier which is good and that means that we can now spend less money uh, on the bot because we know that for one limit buy and for one limit sell order requirements are lower than on, on Binance so uh, in in case of Binance from my experience in order to see the results like some lucrative uh, performance then it really starts with around um, 350 dollars being the uh, the minimum uh, threshold to kind of 
start trading on on Binance with automated bots and to see the results okay um, it doesn't mean that you cannot launch the bot with let's say a 200 and something dollars worth investment okay it's just that around 350 up to 500 dollars depending on the cryptocurrency um, that's pretty much the minimum for you to start uh, trading with automated bots on, on, on Binance specifically, okay? But you can have a lower, let, let's actually try, let's say I want to trade, um, start new bot, let's let's check the as bot for example, and let's go with maybe, uh, no basic attention is what I have now. Okay, let's check if we have maybe AVAX, which is the avalanche and USDT and let's see if what's the minimum in that case I guess it's gonna be around $300 or something uh, let's try maybe $200 and let's see so yeah that's pretty much possible because look it requires 10 grid levels to allocate $200 into this bot so that's that's good maybe let's try 150 adjust grid yeah still possible so uh down to five grids that's what you can afford so that pretty much means that on avalanche it can be around i guess 125 dollars is what you can afford no no actually yeah so yeah around six grid levels which is like almost the minimum of how many grid levels you can have um so yeah 125 dollars split into uh in that case we have one two three three sell orders and two uh no actually four or something so yeah because in, in total six green levels so yeah most of them are going to be allocated to sell orders as you can see the exact allocation 62 dollars goes to quote currency that's uh limit by orders all of these green orders here and the rest goes to the base currency which is uh sell orders in that case so you can start with 125 on apex which can be not the case on other coins let's say uh let's try shiba even though i don't actually know much about this coin it's just for the sake of the example let's check if we can still trade with 125 dollars yeah it's 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 possible here to trade with this and in order for you to kind of uh, lower the grid step because you don't want to market jump that crazy because you see in order for for the bot to execute these orders the market should move crazy like you see this this step is 10 percent so at least 10 percent is required to trigger your first order which is kind of a uh, huge volatility that you put into account here so in that case maybe not the wise thing to have six grid levels with 10 percent of the grid step but what you can do is actually lower it like this so that way by squeezing like by narrowing down the trading range you basically still afford this bot worth 125 dollars but now with six grids you see the grid step is not 10 percent but it's six percent so it can be your configuration for this concrete uh, cryptocurrency okay but honestly I never traded with that uh, amount of grid levels like the minimum I ever had I think was around 15 grid levels or something no actually I'm lying it's it's around 13 as you can see no actually 10 on, on Bitcoin 10 but the reason why I have 10 grids on Bitcoin is because I really wanted just to buy the dip when it was uh, falling down heavily uh, back back in May I guess or something it was the time when I wanted to buy the dip so that's why I used only 10 grid levels uh, with a step of 4% only which was really good result outcome in, in, in the end so yeah that's how you can see it now um, um, and if if we look at other exchanges like Huobi and OKEx, I can tell you for sure that um, well, if they have these coins that you can trade on Binance, then 
The wise thing is, well, to, tr to trade them on Huobi or Okex if they are also present there, because requirements on Okex and Huobi are, are lower. So that way, let's say you have $1,000 on your balance, and if you would trade only on Binance, then when taking into account the minimum, which we just checked is around $125, well, that way you can afford around, what, 8 bots? But on Okex, for example, with $1,000, you can afford, I would say, uh, 10, 11 bots for sure, with this same $1,000 investment. So, it's really up to you, and I um, honestly highly urge you to diversify your portfolio not only with different coins but also um with different exchanges so pretty much don't um hold all of your investments on one exchange okay because there is still a chance that something bad can happen especially with centralized exchanges like binance especially with those that are operating in, in China, okay, like Huobi, for example. So you need to take these uh, systematic risks into account when you enter the market. So that's basically what I'm doing. I have uh, most of my coins on Binance because it's trustworthy. It's, yeah, well, it has a good track record and it's, I mean, Binance is everywhere and to shut it down, it, it would be really, really hard, like almost impossible. So that's why considering its goodwill and its in, like resource capacity it's like right now it's pretty much almost impossible to shut down binance even if you try hard but still possible okay so that's why i have huobi and okex especially if there are no coins that i want to trade on binance then i go to huobi and okex so yeah final answer is around i think hundred hundred dollars is what you can start with but to really see the results uh to cover the um the money you pay for the subscription on Beatscap, I um I would say starting with around three hundred fifty dollars per automated bot is is a wise thing to do because it will generate you enough. It's not hundred percent of course guaranteed because everything depends on the 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 crypto <clears throat> of your choice and how it's gonna be uh, trading in the next month, but. Uh, the way for you to monitor is well just look at use cases like i have here you see some uh make me uh 0.5 percent per day which is enough to cover more than enough to cover expenses on just the subscription of beats cap to kind of uh, cover the cost of trading here so yeah that's why i have like 17 bots as of now even the futures bot here for example um up to 20 with current subscription okay so let's go and see what else we got to answer. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, some of you have been asking about the, the volume profile indicator that I use on, on TradingView and basically to show you more use cases with the volume profile. So what is the volume profile in, in, in general? So it's not the one you see now here. Uh, the volume profile is this tool. You go here. On the left side there is a sidebar you just click on this uh, icon here and go to fixed range volume and let's say I want to see <clears throat> what was the market uh, interest starting from this mid uh, summer 2021 up until the current price so according to this you can clearly see that the biggest interest was at the price of $47, okay? It, uh, actually, it corresponds, uh, I, I would say no, it, it perfectly aligns with the uh, previous price formations like this one being the support in that case, which then acted as a resistance at, at this period here. So usually the volume profile just shows you where the most volume being traded and at which price so according to this one forty seven thousand dollars was the the point of interest for the market and usually when you see the breakout uh like over here for example it's a good sign that the market is now willing to explore the new area uh 
and for example as we now establish this new all-time high that's that's the, the new area for exploration for price exploration okay so this this zone above here it's never been traded so who knows where is going to be the next support resistance okay volume profile just sometimes shows you this support and resistance lines uh, based on the past outcomes like if i go from the basically beginning you see the biggest volume trade was here at 33,000, which is not a surprise because that's the exact level of price at which first of all you see it corresponds with the uh, support over here and uh, perfectly aligns and also that was the um uh, the period of accumulation after this huge uh, sell-off in May 2021 and then we we remember this period of accumulation as big institutionals and those that are labeled as long-term holders have been accumulating coins uh, basically buying coins from exchanges and then uh sending these coins to their cold storages so basically that was the outflow from exchanges <clears throat> that's something that you can see uh on the on-chain analysis tools like glassnode for example or, or skew for example so these are some of the examples of on-chain analysis tools and yeah volume profile pretty much just shows you where you can expect the next support or resistance line so let's say uh, let's let's have a replay no okay so let's use daily chart in that case and uh, delete so let's say we are trading over here let's use the volume profile so you see according to the volume profile we had the most interest trading here okay and since the price now is higher, the question is where are we going to go? Like basically where are you going to expect the next resistance and kind of the uh, pullback? So we look at the volume profile and you see that the next uh, biggest volume traded was in this zone. So pretty much you can expect resistance over here. And also it aligns with previous price formations over here. And if we go and see what really happens yeah you see there was a pullback from this area here so pretty much using volume profile uh, it can be an indication for you when to exit or when to enter the market so considering just volume profile it would not be a wise thing to enter the market right at the time when it almost approached this next resistance line because we would expect a short sell-off from here so instead just wait for this short sell-off this one and then enter as you see the price going back well the perfect scenario would be breaking this uh, formation over here so I would actually enter um around this area at the breakout okay so once i see the price breaking this uh important resistance line uh plus taking into account that the moving averages were crossed which is going to be another indication of the bullish sign here so this is when i would enter with my bots configuration but i mean it, it okay so still you don't need to be that perfect in timing okay um, because you can still enter the market even when the price has almost reached this resistance and you know that there might be a short sell-off and you can actually um, speculate on this short sell-off because you have the bot and and you have the um, the grid setup that let's let's use example with maybe a, a random bot maybe on bnx wherever it is um so you always have this space you leave this space for the bot to use your quote currency to buy more of the base currency in case if the price starts to fall from now okay so uh with bots you don't need to be that perfect in timing you don't need to be like 100 percent sure that okay in in the next five minutes the price is going to skyrocket no with bots you can still 
uh, expect the price to fluctuate lower or higher and that way you can capitalize on it because when the price falls it just buys at a better price and once the price goes higher well it's good because before this uh, rally you accumulated more of the base currency at a better price at a lower price and now it is appreciating which is good okay that's basically what we are doing here and you can see in examples like Algorand for example for on my as bot you see 137 percent of the total result for the last two months which is insane i mean it it all started from here it started from the bottom <laughs> now we're here as it's known in song so yeah 0 0.8 that's was the start but, and and thanks to the f features like trading up uh and and that the bot was yeah and that the bot had a pretty um decent setup in a way that the volatility like of 15 percent of the uh overall trading range was enough for me to capture all of this price momentum on on algorand so when the price was falling a bit it was buying accumulating more of the base currency and which resulted in more returns as the price then uh, reverted back and made new all-time high for example so with bots you don't need to really uh, be that precise in um, market timing okay it's just that you can use volume profile to kind of see where you can expect the price to uh, fall and and where you would expect it to rise and depending on resistance or support line that will show you when to enter or when to potentially exit okay yeah so that's that's pretty much how you use the volume profile okay and yeah and maybe if use it again and this one this area uh, over here this would be for you the uh, important zone if the price falls you would expect the bounce off from here if not then it's gonna break it and fall lower in any case that's the point of interest for you to look at and depending on the reaction you will either exit um, the bot or you will open uh, the new one with better configuration to kind of capture all of this momentum over here as the price falls to the next support line okay um, but honestly I I use only let's say 40% uh, of technical analysis in my research in crypto for me it's all about the fundamental analysis looking into different layer one layer two solutions like polygon well actually polygon is not the layer two solution it's actually the side chain so you cannot really call it the, the layer two solution but if you look at other um yeah uh, projects like for example duidx which is on the layer two solution known as the uh, ZK rollup and knowing the technology of ZK rollup and what are the benefits and when you see projects like DYDX uh, exploring this layer 2 solution taking advantage of its features you know that it's gonna go big and that's actually what happened with the uh, DYDX since its launch one month ago so that's basically how I monitor the market I look into interesting solutions out there uh, looking for those projects that are not afraid of um, experiments okay and that offer something new to this market and that are good in market fit and, and product fit okay so it's not a financial advisor whatsoever it's just how I use uh, my mindset to scan the market for opportunities and that's basically what you see here is it's the result of this uh, research like OXT for example you see how the price skyrocketed so I had some uh, research before that anticipating the price to finally show some interest on the market and it happened okay so like really 70 60 percent of your research I think still is mostly about the fundamental analysis um, because this market is still in its early stage formation of course you can use traditional tools like moving averages and maybe even some Fibonacci tools Fibonacci lines and everything uh, it, it, it it helps really 
okay? It's just that, in my opinion, it's still more fundamental rather than technical because liquidity is still coming into this market. So that's why it's more like fundamentally um, reliant, uh, okay? Let's see what are the questions we got here. Mm. So, yeah, the question was about, let's say you want to trade Solana and what is better to trade solana to stablecoin like usdt or maybe to trade solana to a coin like bitcoin for example so there is a trade-off here let's look at solana to bitcoin okay okay so what's the problem why you mm, once again okay maybe let's just open it here instead Solana Bitcoin yeah uh, I can see some questions about the uh, technical analysis and then bot configurations we will come back to this question in five minutes just let me show you right now uh, the answer for the question about whether to trade Solana to USDT or to Bitcoin. So I think it's 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 a quite simple answer because when you trade Solana to Bitcoin, then of course you are exposed to the volatility of two coins simultaneously because you know that the value of Solana can appreciate or uh, depreciate relative to USD, for example. Because still we live in the world where USD is like the, the key currency pretty much. So you estimate your worth in USD or Euro. So it's not yet the case for you to estimate your, uh, well, your, 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 how to say, deposit in, in Bitcoin. Well, it can be the case for some of you, but still uh, at the end of the day, you will draw money to get them in USD and to buy a house or something else that you need. So... The value of Solana to USD can appreciate, depreciate, and at the same time, Bitcoin can appreciate and depreciate. So, for example, in this scenario, when both the 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 rate of Solana to Bitcoin is falling, uh, like this, for example, and when you see the price of Bitcoin to USD also falling, then that's that's a a, a double pressure. On your position because not only you are losing money uh because bitcoin like because solana is depreciating relative to bitcoin and that way your investment depreciates but also because the value of bitcoin depreciates to its value in in dollar and then it's a, it's a kind of a double attack on, on on your position so maybe let's use example with um Okay, that's Bitcoin, and now let's have an overlay with Solana coin. Solana to mm, Bitcoin, maybe. Let's see. So, if, if when you look at this chart, you can see that during this period, well, actually, that would, would be an ideal one to start from here. So, you could see that both the rate of Solana to Bitcoin appreciated from the 14th, 4th of January 2021 up until around 21st, well, 20th of April. And at the same time, the value of Bitcoin has appreciated relative to USD. So what that means? That means that not only your bot made you profits in Bitcoin because you've been trading Solana to Bitcoin and you know that the bot makes you money in Bitcoin, but the value of Bitcoin that you made, it has also appreciated relative to USDT. So for you, that can be sometimes a double X return compared if you would just trade Solana to USDT. And it can be a triple return depending on the uh, correlation of Solana to Bitcoin and Bitcoin to USDT at the same time. Well, and also Solana to USDT. So. In, in, in some cases, this strategy can bring you the biggest return possible when trading bots. But uh, here you take a double risk because you know that at some point both the value of Bitcoin can depreciate and the rate of Solana to Bitcoin can depreciate. So that way it's, it's a double uh, sword game in that case. So 
if you don't want to uh, play with the market like that, I mean, taking this huge risk, then of course trading just Solana to USDT is like the most conservative strategy you can possibly have in uh, automated bots trading because you just make money in USDT and you know that tomorrow you had like you had $471 earned today and you know it's gonna be worth the same value tomorrow and the day after tomorrow okay so in USDT you just make money in 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 crypto in, in a stable coin which is uh like one of the most reliable in terms of its volatility yes it sometimes falls or appreciates relative to other stable coins so sometimes one usdt is not worth one dollar but in most cases it is so that's like the most conservative so uh to to summarize trading solana to bitcoin would be the most aggressive strategy and at the same time it could bring you the highest return possible but you take the highest risk possible in that case so you can mix uh, you can trade both to USDT and to still have some strategies that are trading to Bitcoin let's say you want to accumulate Bitcoin or Ethereum in a long-term perspective then yes it makes sense to trade some coins uh, in exchange for Ethereum or BNB or maybe Bitcoin. If you want to accumulate more of Bitcoin, BNB or Bitcoin, oh, sorry, Ethereum. So it, it, it makes sense. But yeah, take into account the risk. So yeah, you can actually use the, the trading view in, in this case uh, because you can have the overlay of different charts here. Like you see, I have Solana to Bitcoin rate it's the orange chart here orange line actually and the rate of bitcoin to usdt so that way you can kind of uh, see um, if the market is now more interested in in solana or in bitcoin in most cases um, people prefer to sell their altcoins to bitcoin at the time when they see bitcoin appreciating and especially taking all time highs but for cases like Solana it's you see the interest was more in Solana on this uh, rally in August so it's it's a case by case and again everything is about the fundamental research uh, let's see some questions about the analysis um... Uh, Dimitri, do you, all your robots have stop losses? Um, so, Alex, honestly, I have no stop losses here at all. You know why? Because I monitor activity of my bots every single day. Okay? And that way I have uh, full control over it. And I have some alerts, notifications, just in case if the, mo the price sh sharply falls. So... I have some uh, exit scenarios in my head. The reason why I don't have stop losses as of now is just because, well, I like to have this full control. I like to use stop trailing down to accumulate more coins if I'm out of the trading range. And that way, using stop trailing down, I can expand, uh, I mean, extend my trading range lower to kind of capture this momentum over here for example because fundamentally i'm still uh bullish in general and i've been right for like the last five months you see i've been holding some um bots for like five months already since the, the time when i started to accumulate coins like zero x and l litecoin on 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 a downfall back in may 2021 so and I'm still bullish, especially as we now made this all-time high in Bitcoin. I feel like there is a lot of space upper to explore the price. So I think, well, 66k as of now, it's not the limit. So I think it's we, we might... Again, it's not a financial advice. It's just how I see it. And as I'm like in the midterm, I am bullish. Then I honestly just don't want to kind of... Uh, 
narrow down the price exploration for my bot because it can it can go below my trading range but instead of using the stop loss i would just use the uh stop trading down to accumulate even more coins because i can afford it based on the return that i generated i can i can risk a portion of this return to cover the losses in case if the price sharply falls okay so that's the risk tolerance that I have here. But uh, it's, well, the wise thing for you to do is to use stop trading down plus the stop loss. And the stop loss to be, in that case, over here. So lower below the stop trading down in that case. Because let's say you use the stop trading down. Uh, the bot used some of uh, your funds from available balance. But still, the price continues to fall and you know, okay, the last resort thing for you to do is just to exit it because you don't want to see the value of your investment falling even further. So in that case, stop loss will just save you in that case. And of course, using stop loss makes sense if you don't have that much time as I have, for example, on trading. And let's say you just want to check the status of your bots let's say two times a week then in that case i highly like strongly urge you to use the stop loss because in days when you are out of okay let's say you are you cannot uh open beads gap because maybe you have some other things to do maybe you are on a plane or or whatsoever maybe you're on a trip uh stop loss will secure you in these days okay it's just that in my case i'm not using stop losses as of now but uh, yeah before before that i i used to use them um yeah it, it really depends on the market scenario as of now i don't see any point for me to set the stop loss okay uh, Yes, the volume profile is not in beats gap because that's the tool only available here on the trading view. Okay, so but still on on beats gap you have um, essential tools to use to to plot all of these support and resistance lines. Um, so yes, of course, ideally it would be great to have volume profile here at beats gap. It's just that this feature is not our first priority okay so uh we'd rather focus on other features like the recent one was trading down and maybe adding some new features like that in the nearest future because that way we know it will maximize your returns substantially more than just uh adding some indicators like uh fixed volume profile because that's something you can use here on trading view okay so why would we just copy paste it instead we focus on unique new features okay uh something that you won't be able to find on trading view or on any other platform so i think it's that's the rational i would say we focus on features you won't be able to find elsewhere whereas with volume profile okay just just open trading view and here you go it just literally takes a few clicks and then we are ready to go because at, at, at the end you always go back to your beats gap chart and still use it to plot all of this uh, stop trading stop loss uh, your upper limit price for the trading range and your lower limit price for your trading range so uh, you end up still configuring all of these thing, things on the chart we have here on beats gap um, yep so let me see what else we have here like there are so many questions guys to be honest and i'm trying to select the most interesting one so that you would all benefit from it um is it possible to implement different buy and sell greed steps for bots so that was the question so the, the the technically the question is about the grid step between buy orders and and sell orders. So maybe let's use, uh, yeah, let's use this chart, whatever. Um, so maybe some of you want to have this distant 
layout uh, for your cell orders. Yeah, and then and and there is a, there is a rational behind it for sure. And maybe you want to have your buy orders located tightly like this. Yes, I, I mean I understand the rationale of this question, and in some um, scenarios this can bring you more returns. And I, I I would say in the future we will have this opportunity to play with these kind of settings, like really in-depth setups. But uh, as of now, the principle we follow at Bitsgap is to make it simple, okay, for everyone, so that you just click on Start New Bot as a bot, and all things being equal, here you go, grid step, grid levels, without any uh, really in-depth configurations okay so we the, the principle once again is to make sure that everyone like the, the vast majority of you is well satisfied and can really understand the product without without all of this uh for some hard things like having this different grid step between sell orders and buy orders okay i cannot tell you uh when exactly we will enable this kind of uh, more or less the same configurations that i'm demonstrating on a chart now but that's something we've been thinking about and yes there is a rational to have it for those who are experienced enough in trading bots and they know that when they play with different configurations for sell and buy orders then they can manipulate the the final outcome the final performance of the bot okay and it, it makes sense and yes so it's just that uh, as of now we have these bots but I'm I would say most likely we will have this in-depth configuration feature so that you could even further um, yeah go deep into your configurations to make them as unique as possible I mean to stand out sometimes and yeah it's something that we've been thinking about for quite a long time already and it's i would say in in the roadmap um it seems like um, I, I, so i'm reading now the question from roy uh, Duthak, if i pronounce your name correctly it seems like even with asbot you need to start it on a currency that you have done analysis on to tell that it will be set to rise over time correct when it goes does it wipes out robotic profits so okay so um the thing about analysis and everything is, is is that it's always better to trade those coins that you are familiar with okay and and you know the fundamental aspects of these coins and that at least give you some um, clarity for the midterm perspective let's say for the next five months what can possibly happen with this coin like what's the roadmap of this coin if they are ambitious enough to execute the plans how did they execute their plans in the past did they succeed how many times did they postpone the release of let's say new uh, updates for their platform like Solana for example GYDX whatever so you analyze these things and see if yeah this coin is still competitive on the market because when you know that the market, the coin is competitive enough then it just gives you more confidence that it's a bullish case for you to trade this coin okay and the, the, the thing is that even if you trade coins you're not familiar with, let's say I'm not familiar with the Shiba and let's say just somebody told me it's a good one or maybe I just looked into the backtest results over here and I can see that Shiba has been performing really well which is like 20.86% or something. Um, yeah, well, of course I could use just let's say a technical analysis and I would support these kind of things. Uh, it's a kind of a, a flag in that case and yeah uh so or oh, no actually it's not the flag i think it was known as the uh, ascending triangle or something I'm, I'm, I'm honestly i don't remember exactly but there is this kind of formation on the market that you can spot like this one and if you see that historically the price been moving upwards and you spot this formation on the on the bullish trend then most likely the breakout is going to be higher statistically boom so, well, if I'm not familiar with the coin, then I would just stick maybe with the technical analysis and of, and I would not put 
uh, let's say in those coins in which I'm confident, I would allocate a thousand dollars. But in case of Shiba, I'm not confident. I don't know this coin good enough, so I would allocate, let's say, only four hundred dollars. So that way, I'm just, um, yeah, allocating forty percent because th the trade-off here I take into account is that th the lack of knowledge, and, and that's why I don't allocate uh, a regular sum of thousand dollars. And it can be the case that one. Uh, one bot can generate you more returns than the other ones and it can be that some bots are uh, in a loss like I have for SNX and MKR they are in a loss so that pretty much means that those bots that I have in profit they offset the negative return of my SNX and MKR as of now so it really makes sense to diversify with different uh, bots Play, uh, trading on different coins using different strategies you see i have as bot in most of them and i also have classic bot because i know that when the market is rising it really makes sense for me to, to trade with the uh, classic bot because classic bot on this kind of market scenario is going to bring me the biggest return whereas when i see the market moving sideways or even falling but i'm still confident that it's gonna uh, revert and go higher then as bot is the ultimate solution because as bot is specifically designed for the sideways market to generate you more returns and when it falls it's gonna accumulate more coins it's gonna accumulate more of the base currency when comparing it with the classic bot and the reason for that is it's uh, built in investment distribution logic. It's just that as bot buys more when the price falls. Whereas classic bot buys more when the price appreciates. So take that into account when you configure your bot. So when you see, okay, let's say you, you made this sound research and you're confident that Ethereum is going to go higher. Uh, oh, no, that's Bitcoin. And that way, uh, stick with the classic bot, okay? Because if you feel like the market is gonna ho go higher, then makes sense to trade with classic bot. If you feel like there is a room for it to fall and to kind of let the market accumulate it uh, on the short sell-off, then makes sense to trade with the S bot. It's it's gonna secure your the best way and it's going to accumulate more coins on the downfall that's the case for uh, when it comes to the difference for as bot and the classic bot so uh, as a rule of thumb i would recommend trade only those coins you understand uh, mix with different coins mix with different strategies and that way some some bots will outperform some bots will underperform and some bots will even be uh, in the negative zone, like I have SNX and MKR. But thanks to those other bots, they offset this loss that uh, I have right now in SNX and MKR. So the only thing that matters at the end of the day is your total balance and this the this sum total PNL. That's the only thing that matters at the end of the day okay and by the way we are working on this additional metrics like daily bot profit that's basically the the other question we have here about the daily bot profit feature and i can tell you that uh well by the end of this year we're gonna implement it or it's gonna be implemented at the beginning of 2022 so this is something that we are working on it's not the first priority feature because we have other things that will um well bring you more benefits than this small tiny feature of having some bot daily profit but we are uh, working on the optimization of analytics that we provide here okay if you compare current dashboard the, the analytical dashboard with the one we had uh, seven months ago it's a huge difference and you can say for sure that what we have now is way better because now we we not just tell you what the amount of transactions you had, trading time, all of these things, but also we show you the benchmark, like what's the performance of benchmark coins compared with your bot. 
and what would be the return if you would just hold all coins instead of uh, allocating them to the bot and here's the answer if i would just hold all oxt and that was the amount i had at the time i launched the bot i would be up by 142 dollars only but thanks to the bot thanks to the features like trading up that allow me to follow the market rally thanks to the features like uh, trading down that allows me to buy the dip if my if the price of the coin goes below the initially set trading range all of these things they let my bot to uh, participate in every minor price swing on the market even when i'm away from my laptop and i'm i'm not there to manually do all these things trading down and trading up it saves a lot of time and, and and basically provides more opportunities for the bot to trade and that's the result for oxt in that case you see 400 instead of 146 if i would just hold it and yeah it, i mean here what you have now it tells you uh, a better story compared with what you could have seven months ago and we keep updating these features we keep working on uh, extra metrics that will further let you kind of decompose to digest your um, trading results and see which strategy plays out the best and which one is underperforming so everything here is at your disposal if you are not sure about your strategy you have the demo mode you go here demo mode voila you have this uh, virtual money to trade with literally like seven thousand hundred that's that's heck of a lot of money but it's a virtual money but still it mimics the real market and you can experiment with different strategies before risking your real money so that's the 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 pure gold here okay and uh, you have literally everything to to uh, enhance your skills before uh, risking your real capital okay so that's the the beauty of Beatscap. it's not just an all-in-one platform for portfolio management manual trading and automated bots trading it's literally the place for you to experiment it's a sandbox and and, and this sandbox can be risk-free with the demo mode okay yeah so there was a question if you can edit the settings of your active bots okay so the the thing is you won't be able to change most of the uh, settings for example you cannot change on on let's say on my uh, basic intention token as of now i have 30 grid levels so if i would want to have 35 grid levels instead then i would need to close it and then open the new one with 35 grid levels i cannot do it uh, when my bot is in active trading modes so the things that you can change are following so you click on modify and you can change the trading up you can set the take profit and you can set or deselect the stop loss if you no longer need it so these are the three things you can do okay um and and, and the reason for that is because as of now it's not possible when the board is in active status to change the grid levels and the grid step because that would require us to close all of the open orders and, and allocate the uh, new new buy and sell orders with new settings it's pretty much the same as just closing the bot so in order to avoid this uh, confusion as of now it's just that if you want to change uh, settings like grid step the amount of grid steps and maybe the total allocation it's just through this bottom just close the bot uh, cancel all open orders and yeah you cancel it and then you open the new one with new settings and you're ready to go again all right so this is how it works as of now to answer your question um, So as of the uh, trailing uh, stop, so for example, when you trade bots, you can see that, let's use the classic bot, uh, yeah, here for example. So if you set the stop loss, boom, over here, and then you also set the trailing up, 
What that means essentially is that your stop loss becomes trailing automatically. So whenever the price go uh, reaches higher price over here and goes higher with a trailing up you know that your trading range will follow it and not only the trading range will follow the market rally but the stop loss is going to follow it as well and the way it's going to follow it is by um, always maintaining this distance from the lower price so if it was initially set let's say as of now it's what 10 percent then whenever the trading range goes higher like this for example your stop loss is gonna be 10 percent down always like maintaining this distance so that's why you need to know that something that is not obvious at first glance but uh once you start trading and well of course when you listen to this kind of webcast that we host you you get these tips and tricks so now you know that with the trading app enabled your stop loss automatically becomes a trailing stop loss as well as of the trading here where you have also stop loss and uh trading feature the thing about the, the trailing is that uh, well your stop loss and, and it's gonna follow as well with the trading and also uh, if you let's say no actually that's not important to be honest what I was just thinking of showing you instead let's see if there are some use cases I can demonstrate instead so there was a question about if we are planning for the trading down uh, for the classic bot. So yes, actually there is a task for us, not, not for us, but for the uh, technical department to figure out the best way to implement the trading down feature for uh, the classic bot. As of now, we don't have it, as you can see, when you go to classic bot, uh, you don't have the trading down. It's because of the uh, some of the limitations of the classic bot because of its investment distribution logic. But we are working on this feature for the classic bot. So I would say the priority is like the uh, coming coming uh, month, not weeks. So you you should expect it in I would say at, at the end of this year or at the beginning of the 2022. Um, about the, the uh, app for yeah I think it was a question about the mobile app so again it's planned for 2022 um, and what else we got here maybe in some life questions like does the asbot ever execute a trade that occurs in a loss uh, no Brian the answer is no and let me tell you why uh, when you understand the logic of grid trading which is the uh, the built-in mechanism of the as bot you know that it the bot will always buy low and sell high and it, it can do this regardless of the market direction it can do this on the falling market in the rising market it doesn't matter it will always find these opportunities to buy low and sell high so that's why the bot profit is always in green okay but the change is what matters at the end of the day because it shows how your total investment has appreciated or depreciated and that's the only thing that matters actually and it can be negative why because you have some MKR on your balance and that means that you are exposed to the depreciation of MKR if the price falls. So that's why this will affect your overall investment change and that's why you can see it's in negative zone. But the bot profit is always positive because if you look at the chart, like let's say, let me open my uh, Cosmos coin, you can see when the price was falling here you see it was buying lower 
and then it was selling it higher over here over here you see all of these uh, red circles it, this is how it uh, works on the falling market it, it 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 buys and sells because even on the falling market you have this uh price swings higher to sell and then again lower to buy and then again higher to sell and it can be an never lasting uh, process so that's why if you have a really wide trading setup let's say you have not as i have it here uh it's around what 21 percent but let's say your trading range is that wide that it covers 100 well, okay 50 percent or maybe 100 percent whatever that way you can even forget about your bot for like month or something and then you go come back let's say in five months after a long vacation or whatever uh, your your bot is still trading and it still makes you money the bot itself always makes you money it's just that how the value of the base currency behaves is what really affects your uh, investment change because it can either depreciate or appreciate uh. so hi there how can i save my chart settings for my trading bot well uh honestly i don't know I never did this before it's just that i always have in my head what's the range of grid step i i, I want to follow and it's never the same for a new bot it's i, I never copy paste uh settings and as of now there is no one button for you to just copy paste the configuration from this bot to to a new one it's just that you can always look at, let's say, I want to have the same settings that I have on the MKR trading to USDT, but on the, the DOC trading to USDT that I want to launch. So I'm going to click on here, and I see that my grid step is 1.17, my total number of grid levels is 32. And then, of course, I also look at the overall trading range, what's the, uh, the white of it, and that's pretty much what I need to look at when I open the new bot so that, that, that that's the way for you to kind of copy paste the uh, configuration as of now and also you can use this shared and earn um, feature so that the rest could see your configurations and kind of copy paste it um, there was also the question about um, if, if you can link uh, multiple accounts to Bitsgap. Let's say you have, uh, no, I, I mean two accounts on Bitsgap uh, to be linked to one Binance account. So that's, that's possible. So let's say here I have one API key. So I go to my exchanges. That's one API key. And that's one account, thirty-five thousand dollars account. And if I have another bids gap account, I just need to exit and then log into my another account. I can still add this same uh, Binance account worth thirty-five thousand, but this time with a new API key. Or maybe actually, no, actually, yeah, with the new one is is going to be a better one. Um, and you can still trade from from different Bitscap accounts on one Binance account, for example. Um, that's 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 possible. That's something you can do. I just don't really see any um, use cases of it, because let's say you are trading for like you're trading your own funds, and at the same time you also want to trade um, the funds that maybe your family friends gave it to you to kind of trade for for them instead and that way you can use api management on on binance and you can generate this api keys and then you can link them to a bitscap account but if you are using your binance api already here you cannot have another one binance 
uh, on one Beatscap account. So it would require you to have another Beatscap account to link this thing. Okay. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe that's the use case. If you want to manage somebody else's money and they give you the API, so that way you really need to have another Beatscap account to, to manage it. Or you can just, well, cancel your uh, own Binance account and instead link it to the Binance account of those you want to uh, to trade. Yeah. So are there plans to have bots trade uh, options contracts? Um, it's not in the foreseeable future as far as I know. Okay. But there are lots of other, I would say, more interesting things happening out there. For example, as of now, we have most of the, yeah, it's actually only centralized exchanges that we have here. But um, there's something related to decentralized exchanges that we've been thinking about. And there are some solutions on a table for it. So. Yeah, we are building this new venues for you to explore, uh, especially when it comes to the DeFi market. So we are there for you. As of the options, well, honestly, I don't know that many platforms that give you option contracts. I think that's the Deribit one you have, and then that's the, the Binance. And yeah, maybe FT FTX, I don't know. I think FTX is more like a derivative trading, like more like perpetual contracts with leverage and everything, but I'm not sure about the options. So um, yeah, I think that's something we can can discuss for sure if if there are some provisions for the options trading. But as of now, you have combo bot and the combo bot trades futures contract. Like you see here, I have uh, my bot trading on the Aave, to USDT uh, with 10x leverage. So I allocated $97, but it is trading the contract worth uh, $900. Okay. So that way, that, that that's something you can do related to derivatives trading. But with the combo bot, it follows slightly different logic compared to the spot market bots because here you can have um you can have short sell bots that make you money when the price is falling and you can have long bot that makes you money when the price is rising yeah so as of the take profit that was another question as of now you just set it at the price at which you want to uh, exit let's say alga i don't have it on alga but i can click on modify set the take profit oh but why is that percent okay so here it's the percent interesting maybe i forgot something let me check cancel let's go to oxt modify take profit okay it's it's a percentage but let's say i want to open the as bot okay so it's the percentage so okay so it's in the percentage in that case so no worries um, honestly, since there was a question about the take profit and when you should use the take profit, um, well, it depends on your trading style, to be honest. You can set a certain benchmark for you. So let's say if the bot makes you 50%, that's it for you. You want to exit it. You don't want to trade it anymore. Uh, so that way you set your take profit at 50%. And once your change, which is here in this column, it reaches 50%, the bot will be automatically closed. Okay, so it will sell all of the base currency and that way it's a 100% exit to the quote currency from the market. But uh, from my perspective, uh, since we have things like trailing up, trailing down, which let you maximize your returns and let you follow the markets every time it rallies, I don't really see the point for most of my bots to be uh, kind of restricted just to, let's say, 50% of the total return. 
okay when i know that potentially they can bring me more returns why would i close them if i see that the daily average return satisfies me like one percent is really satisfying result okay uh if i see that well i just stick with this configuration i don't do anything about it i'm i'm okay with one percent per day it's it's more than enough it's like three percent per month that's heck of a lot of money well people uh happy when they make 15 20 percent per year but when you make 30 percent per month that's i mean that's insane results so why would i close the bot of course when i see bots that um bring me like you see empire for one month it made me only three percent that's like the shittiest result i have so <laughs> and that's because pretty much it all ended up where i started it even lower actually so i started here at this price and now it's trading lower so my configuration was not good enough to capture like to seize all of this price momentum over here down to two thousand and one hundred dollars so that's why i basically did not participate in the market here in this region but uh right now it's like the shittiest configuration i have so i should actually consider closing it and if i'm still if i still believe in the value of mkr then it makes sense to launch the bot but with better settings maybe setting my uh lower price down to well i would say around this area okay it would make sense because i look at the previous price formations which was over here over here so i know that the support line is around this price 2100 um so yeah you look at your shittiest results and you look why it's the shittiest one once you understand why it's the shitty one you just you just close it or uh like close it entirely or launch it launch relaunch it with better settings or or maybe you just use your funds in other coins instead that you believe will generate you more basic attention just two days passed and uh well it's it's not yet time for me to judge the performance it's just two days at least at least one month is is what you let the bot to trade s and x um well also one of the shittiest results so for two months minus one percent which is well kind of okay because look the price depreciated and if not the bot then my final result would be minus 19 percent okay i'm well around 15 percent or something so if not the bot then i would lose 16 percent or something but thanks to the bot it's just minus two percent we can actually compare it you see if not the bot it would be minus 10 percent or something minus 106 dollars but thanks to the bot which made me money even on the falling market it offset this whole market plunge and i have i'm having only minus two percent okay which is still kind of okay because well fundamentally i i do believe in in snx uh it's it's a pretty decent uh, synthetics protocol uh they kind of pioneered the synthetics uh market and also they have a pretty uh impressive uh dao infrastructure they are experimenting a lot and that's something that i like and that's why in the long term i i still believe in snx so yeah i think i'm just gonna wait for a while for it to continue trading and then see how it goes if if it still stays uh, at 0.19 percent per day then most likely i will use not 62 grid levels but i would use the setup like from my best performing asset so i'll go uh polka dot one inch you see all of them they have around well if you calculate the average uh so it's going to be around what 30 30 30 grid levels on average per each and instead of what i have now on snx which is 60 i should rather have in that case maybe 30 grid levels to boost my performance because based on the comparative research uh on algo polkadot and one inch since they are my best performing assets 
I look at what uh, are the patterns that I mean what makes them common so you see usually that's lower grid amount uh, also the grid step ranging from 0.8% to 1.3 or something let's check the SNX well so you see the SNX is, is, is uh, higher so it's 2% so you see you, you look at your best performing bots and try to figure out what uh, unites them what is the common pattern if you recognize and once you recognize this common pattern pattern you can uh, copy paste it on other coins and kind of check the results so in case of my SNX I think it's actually right now it makes sense to close it and uh, set it with just 30 grid levels with the same investment of 980 dollars so i think it would be a wise thing to do so what i'm trying to show you here is the the rationale behind uh, your analytical research when it comes to the performance of your bots you look at your best assets you look at your shittiest assets and you try to see what makes them bad what makes them good and once you spot differences once you spot common patterns copy paste best strategies and get rid of those that uh well historically did not play out so that's pretty much how you play with your boss so and well you see for for the last five months everything was going just great okay it's 31 percent uh actually I, I closed some of my bots so i think it's it's even a bigger return but yeah it's it's a pretty decent return considering that i started my active trading uh, only two and a half months ago not five months ago so it's something you need to keep a track on um yeah and adding features like daily bot profit and maybe some other metrics here on top it would be really reasonable and uh, useful because that way you could compare your past results and see if you should change your overall strategy and maybe you should get rid of some worst bots because as of now it's just uh, case by case all the time which is well still okay but i would say it's not the ultimate uh, solution as of now so I think we should have some more metrics to better understand the overall performance of your bots. Uh, yeah, okay. So anyway, to sum up, I would say uh, trading bots is, is great. And uh, you see the results here. And you can use, you can see the use cases from other traders uh, that you can find in Telegram community. But uh, the thing is, what I always say, never allocate 100% of your balance to bots because the best way for you to trade, in my opinion, that's based on my practical experience, is, is to split. So automated bots, it's 50%. Why 50%? Because, well, automated bots, they can significantly minimize your loss in case of the price is falling. So if you were wrong about the price direction and the price is falling, well, automated bots, they can significantly minimize the loss. And also they trade daily, they bring you money daily. You can go do other things uh, in your life. And you know that bots, they will just keep trading and trading, especially with features like trailing up and trading down. You can be by, uh, well, almost all the time be in the market using this feature so that's why 50% goes to automated bots the rest uh, goes to uh, hodl like it's like just buying coins and holding them uh, on your balance and for for me that's that's Bitcoin here that's Ethereum some algo quantum DYDX uh, yeah so there are quite many coins that I just hold all because I'm completely indifferent towards the minor price swings that happen daily. Like if it falls 10% intraday, I'm okay with that because, well, these are the coins I hold long term, so I don't care. Because in long term perspective, they will reward me a lot more than than just 
uh, manual trade or automated bots well most likely and manual trading and by manual trading i mean this section here you go to trading and here you manually set all of the buy and sell orders that's what i call uh, manual trade well you can also call it smart trading mode so here you just play on your own you are the god on your own you control your uh, trading here like it's 100% control so that's why I only allocate 20% and the, the beauty of this allocation split is that let's say automated bots made you for the last month let's say 30% of the return whereas holo strategy let's say made you i don't know 20 percent of the return and manual trade let's say you are very bad at uh trading on your own and maybe it made you minus 20 percent okay so the money you made here in automated bots and in hodl they it will offset the the loss you made in annual manual mode so that's why i i think that's the wise thing to do when it comes to the risk management is that split your investments uh, into different products so in case of bitscap that's automated bots that's hodl strategy and that's the manual trade mode and it played well for the last year in my case so automated bots 50 percent allocation has for me proven to be the best uh, golden ratio in that case um and of course further to minimize the risk you can also set the maximum you can allocate per each bot so let's say 100 per each bot so you know that you never put all money in one trading bot strategy you know that some bots can outperform some can underperform so the only thing that matters at the end of the day is the final result of your sum total pnl and that's why it makes sense to split your investments proportionately within the strategy same with the hodl Let's say not more than hundred dollars per each coin makes sense because one coin can fall sharply let's say minus 70 percent but this one let's say can fall only 20 percent imagine if you would allocate 200 dollars to the first coin so it would be minus 70 to your 200 dollars but with a split it's just on hundred dollars and that's why it really makes sense to further uh, diversify within the strategy you selected so we have automated hodl and manual trade mode um yeah so pretty much that's it for today um most of the questions you guys have are related to future updates and features we are working on so that's why um yeah i'm telling you that you should expect some of them by the end of 2021 or at the beginning of 2022 and well i can assure you that there are many um i mean impressive things that we are working on right now and i mean i have goosebumps when it well, I, well yeah i really have goosebumps when I'm, I'm i'm willing to share it but i just cannot because that's the the secret sauce as of now but if i if i could mentally share it with you uh yeah without violating any uh, uh, non-disclosure agreements or anything i mean you would be really fascinated with what we are building now and continue improving further so expect more from bates cap and we've been always delivering what we promised and really uh, glad that we have this loyal community and yeah appreciate guys for coming and yeah spending your time I never take it for granted and even if it would be only five people watching this webcast I would uh, host it with the same level of quality that that's for sure because what we do at Bitscap is we try to deliver not 100% but 200% and this has been historically proven and based on the results we achieved so far so yeah if you have some questions unanswered please feel free to ask them in in the support here um we now have more people working in support so that means they can handle more questions and you can go to telegram uh community and well share your 
success with the rest of our community and you can share your tips and clues and you can ask for some guidance from from uh, yeah reputable traders that we have and you can participate in the affiliate program by sharing your performance and that way you see affiliate link you can invite your friends and you can even monetize on that so there are many things to do at beatscap actually apart from just trading um we can grow together so that's the beauty of beatscap we are all together in one boat so let's let's uh yeah continue doing good things together um that's that's really such a great thing to do and um we will keep providing you with these tools to maximize your returns and to minimize the risk so stay tuned um subscribe to youtube channel make sure to watch next webcast and you can also watch previous webcasts and you can also go to beatscap blog and read some of the articles we have about trading and some strategies you can use so yeah everything for you and i hope to see you uh next time so once again thanks a lot appreciate uh, and have a profitable trading